They call it the Acer Concept D5 Pro, a laptop that is supposed to be built for creative professionals. Let's see if it stands up to the rigors of what we as creative professionals need. Getting right into it, here are the benchmarks that are going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now they're claiming a you know Pantone validated display at you know a Delta E less than two, great color gamut range and color accuracy. They're claiming great performance, quiet performance. You know, we don't know all that loud gamer noise of, you know, the big fans running all the time, but we do need performance. So will it fit into those creator focused categories that we need? Now, first and foremost, if you're curious about my full thoughts on the build quality and usability of this laptop, I've done an unboxing and I'll link that up at the end of this video so you can see my thoughts on all of those aspects. In this video, we're gonna cover the things that I did not able to cover in the unboxing because I hadn't yet reviewed it. And so now we're gonna get right into those. First and foremost, let's check out the color gamut range to see if it truly is up to snuff for creative professionals. Now the Delta E is just below that too. They claimed a Delta E less than two. They nailed it, but it wasn't vastly below it. Still great result. Color accuracy was good as well with 100% sRGB and 100% DCI P3 with a slightly lower Adobe RGB. And then the screen brightness was good. Not amazing, but definitely good and suitable for indoor and some outdoor creator use. Now, jumping over to the webcam. How is this webcam for you know all those new on-the-go Zoom and video calls that we've been doing? Here's a quick sample for you. This is the webcam on the Acer Concept D5 Pro. A little sample of the audio as well as the video. It's a little on the um, orange side. Uh, and the quality is obviously that 720p, but it, it'll do the job for your Zoom calls and virtual meetings that you need. And regarding the speakers, how was the audio experience? Here's a sample of that as well. Now the speakers, in my opinion, were not amazing. The speakers are here below the chassis and it just it just sounded very muffled. Uh, didn't get the best audio quality in my opinion. So for me, that would kind of be a ding. Now, way in which it redeems itself is the nice strong aluminum chassis. Let's go ahead and check out the screen flex really quick. Very little screen flex um, here. It definitely is not as much as the, you know, the new MacBook Pro, which I was completely amazed by how much little screen flex they had, but it is good. And then here at the bottom, a little bit more screen flex at the bottom I see there is it kind of pushes out away from the chassis. You do have the two hinges here and the screen opens all the way. I do like that because sometimes if the screen only opens to here and it's kind of really close to me, it feels awkward. And so I like to be able to open it up a little bit more if I'm having like a smaller working space. So I do like that as well. Now taking a look at the keyboard and trackpad, I'm gonna give you a quick audio sample of both so you can hear what that sounds like. Now the keyboard is nice and quiet as you heard in the audio sample. It has more of a short to medium, kind of more sits around the medium key press and it has a good snappy uh, key press. I like how it pops back. Now one thing that I dislike about the keyboard is the 3 4 shift key. I like to have a full shift key. I wish they would have given us maybe the smaller uh, click arrow keys here and then giving me a full shift key. I tend to sometimes miss that shift key and I just, ugh, I'm not fond of that. I like to know that I'm gonna nail that shift key so I don't do a bunch of typos. Efficiency to me is is huge. I need that full size shift key, so that's a bit annoying. The trackpad has really good quiet click. I mean, it is it is nice. It's a very good execution on the trackpad. It's not rattly. It's well secured to the chassis. So great work on that Acer. Now moving on to the ports real quick. Let's go ahead and check out the ports. We have our power port here, a nice large vent, RJ45, USB Type A, USB Type C, and a headphone jack. On the other side, we have another USB type C, eight HDMI port, USB type A, as well as the SD card slot and another vent. Now remember, these are Thunderbolt because we are using Intel. So you're gonna have that quick transfer speeds there for the Thunderbolt and then the SD card slot, get your photos in quick and everything you need for the on the go creator. Now battery life is an area that I thought, okay, it's pretty good, not amazing, did pretty good results. Now I did the Passmark productivity battery life test. And then for the streaming battery life, I did a YouTube video streaming until the battery went dead at about 35 to 40% brightness. For the Photoshop battery life, we ran the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat until the battery went dead. That's how we got those results. It's a pretty strong, powerful workflow. So if you're doing more light Photoshop work or light graphic design work, you might see a little better battery life, but still that's kind of a, a low optimistic, hey, this is going to be, I don't want to say the worst, but like this isn't like pretending it's going to be better than it is. And then for the video editing battery life, what we did is we ran a 
uh, Premiere Pro Project 4K on playback loop until the battery went dead. Now, how on the go friendly is this laptop? It's fairly thin, but it's a, uh, you know, it's kind of a mid weight. It's not like the lightest laptop I've ever held, but it definitely is not a heavy, chunky gaming laptop. So as far as weight and thickness, I think it's a good package um, for a 16 inch laptop. It's got a nice, a big 16 inch screen. Um, so I would definitely say good on you, Acer, for being able to pack aluminum build quality 16 inch screen into a fairly thin and light package. Now, before we get into the performance benchmarks, I want to say that this is definitely an upgrade from last year's model that I reviewed. When I pulled it out of the box last year, I thought eh, it just kind of feels like they're just taking a gaming laptop and doing a few things to make it more like a crater laptop. This year, when I pulled this one out of the box, I thought, okay, we're getting a better built machine. We're getting a more refined machine that really looks like something I, as a creator, would be proud to carry around. As a creator, we're, we're looking at design, we're looking at functionality, we're looking at usability. I mean, that's how our minds think. Um, and so for me, this was definitely an upgrade. So I would say kudos to them, not just taking a gaming laptop and adding a few features to make it a creator laptop, but thinking through the process and doing a good solid redesign to give us a quality package. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of this model, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. If you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Without further ado, let's get into the performance section. Now this model comes with the i7 11800H and RTX 3060 GPU, 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. Now as we get into Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench single core and multi-core, you can see it hits around the mid range of the charts. It's not amazing, it's not very poor, it's just a pretty solid i7 11800H benchmark inside of this laptop. Again, you can have a solid processor, but depends on how the manufacturer optimizes it in their laptop. They've done a good job at that. Now next up, let's get into some of the more of the real world tests. And as we're looking at 3D modeling, I would say for an RTX 3060, this is good, but not amazing for 3D modeling that is. Um, I think there's some other computers that are a little more well optimized for the 3D modeling programs, um, but it did do good in Autodesk Maya, kind of snuggling up right over to a few of the other RTX 3060 computers. Now, let's move on to PC Speed Creo and SolidWorks. Again, a pretty good middle of the range chart, especially for SolidWorks being that it is not a workstation GPU, it does pretty good. Though if you're wanting to get into SolidWorks, I'd recommend a workstation like a Quadro GPU to get you up into that higher range for a program that needs a certified workstation GPU, something like SolidWorks or Revit, you're gonna get better performance out of that type of GPU, not a you know RTX gaming GPU. Now, moving on to After Effects, I would say that this laptop is solid, good, middle of the charge, strong laptop for After Effects. You're going to have really any issues there. Um, it's not something that, like I said, is blowing my socks off, but it is a solid performer in After Effects. Now, moving into video editing, this is an area that I was impressed by with Intel Quick Sync, has good export times. And then also, as we get into playback, it has really solid playback as well. Zero drop frames for 4K, some for uh, B-RAW, and then quite a bit more for red footage. Red footage is, is a struggle, continues to have laptops. Give them a hard time processing some of that footage. Um, so if you're going to be doing red footage, I'd personally go with a desktop PC um, or something of a much stronger nature. But the problem when you go to a laptop with red footage is you're going to have a lot of heat. You're going to have a lot of fan noise. And with a desktop PC build, it's going to be quieter, it's going to have less heat, um, it's just going to be more efficient. So that's kind of my vote on the red footage at this moment. Maybe as we move into the future, we're going to see better results out of laptops, but that is just some hefty footage. Now moving on to DaVinci Resolve, we have good export times out of Resolve, nothing, you know, earth shattering. DaVinci Resolve for Intel tends to be a little bit slower than Premiere Pro because of, you know, Intel's quick sync with the Premiere Pro, but it's still pretty good export times. Now the playback is going to be smooth. These laptops are well optimized. DaVinci Resolve optimizes themselves really well for playback, so that's really never a big concern. We're just always kind of looking at the export times. Now, as far as the thermals are concerned, this laptop does good keeping cool. It's got about a 70, low, mid 70s uh, thermal there. You cannot change the fan mode, so I didn't have those fan mode tests that I normally have with laptops. Um, I was surprised at this laptop, unless I just couldn't find it. I did a lot of digging couldn't find it. I couldn't find a way to control the fan mode, but I would say that the export time during the export, it had about a 48 decibel fan noise with a pretty low thermal. And so I was impressed with the thermal management of this laptop, though I couldn't get it quieter if I wanted to. It still had really good thermals. 
and it had good fan noise for the export time and playback that it produced. Now, moving on to Photoshop, a 751 does give you a solid score. As you can see, it falls a little bit lower on the charts compared to some of the other laptops. So if you're using a ton of layers and a ton of processing inside of Photoshop, you might see a little bit lag or a little bit slower load times for certain effects in Photoshop. But overall, a 751 is solid and you shouldn't have any issues. It shouldn't be like a horrible laggy experience. It is a strong i7 1100H uh, CPU really good high performance CPU that's built to run quick inside of Photoshop. So I've not seen any concerns, but I just wanted to kind of talk through the lower score there and what that might implicate, the implications of that possible look, the, implica the possible implications of that lower score. That's what I'm trying to say. Comment if you want to provide some feedback on what you've heard here in this video. Links are free to make a purchase, likes if this video brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.